All right, in this video, we're going to look at intermolecular forces. And if we look at this word, inter, we know means between, and molecular means molecules. So, intermolecular forces are attractive forces that exist between molecules of a substance. Now, what causes these attractive forces? Basically, it boils down to something you probably learned in physics, and that is this idea that opposites attract. So if I have a negative charge and a positive charge, they're going to pull towards each other. Now you might say, well, what about two positive charges? Won't they repel? And two negatives, don't they repel? And the answer is yes, they do. So the question is, why are intermolecular forces pretty much only attractive? Why don't we say attractive or repulsive forces? And the reason for that is that molecules, if they have charges, will have a positive and a negative side. So let's imagine a molecule that has a positive side and a negative side. If it comes in contact with another molecule, like this, we can see why they would attract. The negative of one would attract to the positive of another. But you might say, well, wait a minute. What if the molecules don't interact that way? What happens if the negative of one came into contact with the positive of another? Wouldn't they repel? And the answer is, at first, they might. Like, these two negative sides are going to repel, but what will then happen is this molecule, one of them will rotate around, until they are in alignment like this and they will attract. So even if there's repulsion, they will one of them will sort of spin until there's attraction. It's almost like if you have two magnets. If you have a magnet, magnets use north and south instead of uh, positive and negative. But if you have them like this, where they're opposites of each other and they're lying on the table, and if you're holding this one with your hands, so let's say, this one is stationary. As you bring this closer, this magnet will actually spin uh, until they stick together. So when we talk about IMFs, attractive forces win out. So we're only going to really be looking at the attractive forces between molecules. What causes these attractive forces? Basically, charges. Uh, when there are charges, they will cause attraction between molecules. So let's look at a ranking of the strongest to weakest intramolecular forces. And we're going to start with the dipole-dipole forces, because they're the easiest to understand. So these are IMFs that occur between polar molecules. And if you're not sure, again, what a polar molecule is, go back and uh, look at some older stuff. But a polar molecule is basically going to have permanent charges to it. So if I have one molecule with a negative side and another with a positive side, if I have a whole bunch of these, you know, it's a substance, there is going to be some pretty strong attraction between the opposite sides of these molecules. So the positives of some will attract to the negatives of another. And that is a dipole-dipole force. Uh, and that's, again, relatively strong, and that is one type of IMF. Now there's a special type of dipole-dipole force that is known as hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding is a little bit of a confusing name because of this word bonding. They're not bonds in the sense of a bond between, like, two carbon atoms that we're used to. Hydrogen bonding is just extremely strong dipole-dipole forces that occur in molecules with HF, HO, or HN bonds. The way to remember this is hydrogen bonding is a lot of fun. Now, what is so special about these bonds? Well, hydrogen does not have a very large electronegativity. So it, when it is in, interacting with some of these atoms, F, O, and N have very large electronegativities, the F, O, and N pull the electrons over to their sides very effectively. Um, and so they make these negative and positive charges, but they're stronger than usual. Hydrogen is also a very small atom, so it kind of gets bullied by these um, negative atoms a little bit more effectively. And as a result, when you have a molecule like HF, the interactions between the negative side and the positive side, these are a little bit stronger than your typical dipole-dipole forces. They're really strong. They're so strong that in a sense they call them hydrogen bonds. They're not really bonds, but they're, they're strong enough that they sometimes sort of get that name. So they're still a type of intramolecular force. Uh, they're just a stronger form of dipole-dipole forces. Um, that occur only when you see H to F, H to O, or H to N uh, type bonds. All right, the last type of IMF that we're going to deal with, these are just impure substances, are known as London dispersion forces, but they're, they're induced dipole, induced dipole forces. Now, to explain what these are, the page here. So imagine I have 
uh, a completely nonpolar molecule. So for example, H to H. Hydrogen gas, this is as nonpolar as it gets. You know, there's no charges forming here. The hydrogen atoms are sharing the electrons equally. So you might say, can these molecules ever attract other ones if there's no charges, if there's no spark? Well, it turns out just because these hydrogen atoms are sharing these electrons equally, so here are my two electrons, electrons are always in motion. So at any given moment, two of these electrons could be hanging out with this atom more than the other atom, which would give this hydrogen a partial negative charge for the moment, and this one a partial positive charge for the moment. It's known as an induced dipole. It's temporary. So when one of these hydrogen atoms gets this induced charge, again, it's temporary, all of a sudden another hydrogen molecule comes near it, the electrons in this bond will attract to this positive side, and that will get an induced dipole charge. So there's going to be a momentary attraction between the hydrogen molecules, which you wouldn't think is possible because, again, if it's nonpolar, typically we say nonpolar don't have charges, so why would they attract? But again, induced dipole forces um, cause this to happen. So this is weaker, generally, than your dipole-dipole forces. It's like a light switch. Uh, we're and so now, um, induced dipole, induced dipole, then, these are IMFs that occur in all molecules. So even polar molecules have uh, London dispersion forces. Basically, every molecule will have this type of force. It's just that nonpolar molecules, this is the only force that they have. So it's a little confusing. You can think of it as rankings, like in karate, you know, you start with maybe a white belt, and then you move to your yellow belt, and then a, you know, green belt or whatever. If you own a green belt, it means you've also accomplished the ones below. So nonpolar molecules only have induced dipole forces, whereas something that has hydrogen bonding has all three. Um, so you can think of it as a ranking like that. Now where it gets tricky is you might be tempted to think that if something has hydrogen bonding, it's always going to be stronger. So for example, water, this has hydrogen bonding. Its Lewis structure looks like this. It's bent. It clearly has an OH bond. So this has H bonding uh, for its IMF. Whereas something like iodine, I2, this is clearly nonpolar. And so this only has uh, London dispersion forces. However, water is a liquid at room temperature. Iodine is a solid at room temperature. So technically speaking, I2 has stronger IMFs. But why? It only has London dispersion forces. The reason it turns out is that London dispersion forces get stronger. Um, they're stronger the bigger the molecule is for bigger molecules. So the reason for that is bigger molecules have bigger electron clouds, which are susceptible to more distortion, and so they will end up getting like more charge, you know, stronger charges or more permanent charges, and so they'll stick together better. So if you're ever comparing two molecules and you want to predict their properties, it's usually important to look at their molar masses and see if they're at least reasonably the same. Water has a molar mass of 18, whereas iodine is roughly 254. So iodine is much larger, heavier than water. It's not really fair to compare these two. You would want to compare it to something with a similar molar mass. Um, but again, this is just a general trend that hydrogen bonding is typically stronger than dipole-dipole, which is typically stronger than London dispersion forces, if their molar masses are, are in similar range. Um, so that's um, IMFs. Again, you might want to you know, look through the textbook a little bit and just see if uh, I missed anything here. But I think that for the most part, that will uh, cover the topic. So until next time, I am Derek Nova. Have a delightful day.